Today we're going to change the rear brake pads on this Discovery Sport. As you can see, it says brake pads worn and looking around the car, it seems to be the pads on the rear. And I just thought it'd be probably easier, maybe cheaper, sort of certainly cheaper to do it myself. Uh, probably a little bit quicker. Uh, normally a quite quick job. Uh, and also I can then choose my preferred make of uh, brake pad, which at the moment are Mintex ones. Uh, and the parts are relatively cheap, pads for about £25 on eBay, I'll put some links in the video description, and the sensor was about £12. Um, you can see which set of brake pads it is by having a quick look, and I think it's the rear ones. Uh, you can normally have a quick tell, like you can see where my finger is there, uh, I'll try and zoom in a little bit. Then you can see the piece of metal, the backing of the brake pad is from here to there, and the material of the brake pad is from where my finger is to the disc, which is that bit. So you can see it's about two or three mil worth of thickness left. So not too much to worry about. Um, but uh, it needs changing because the warning light is on. And uh, this car's done 20,000 miles. And I think the wear on the brake pads, uh, probably about normal compared to a lot of cars, especially SUVs. Some might last longer. But it's accentuated here because the car primarily does fairly short journeys, left outside all the time. And as you can see, the brake disc has uh, corroded somewhat. So this is about uh, coming up two and a half years old or something. Um, so being left outside all the time, of course, discs are made of steel. They corrode and accentuates the wear on the brake pad. So basically a problem of not being used enough. Um, the disc itself doesn't appear too bad apart from the corrosion. There's no ridge on the outer edge, so it's not excessively worn. Um, I might just give that a little bit of a sand to uh, rub off the uh, rust corrosion before I change the new pads. So I looked up on the internet, different instructions uh, about uh, changing the pads. Uh, other people have done it themselves, all fairly uh, basic. Uh, there's a little bit of a complication to do with the electronic parking brake and we want to get the locking wheel nut which is kept in the toolbox in the back that is in a slot here and before you jack up the car it's probably a good idea just to slacken off the locking wheel nut and some of the other nuts and since we haven't got any parking brake and the cars are neutral you want to chock the wheels stop it rolling off uh, got a couple so I've released the wheel nuts, just turned them half a turn or so, jacked up the car, uh, got a couple of axle stands underneath the axle for extra safety as well, wheels are off the ground, and then we can start taking the wheels off. Before we start on the job, we need to release the electronic parking brake, and um, there's various discussions on the internet, not a huge amount of information. Um, on the Land Rover Topics system, it says that you've got to have a particular bit of software to put the electronic parking brake into service mode. What I'm going to do is uh, the very quick and easy method of starting the car and switch it into neutral and put the handbrake off. Let's just make sure handbrake on, handbrake off, and you can feel the brake pedal move up and down. So if I leave the car running in neutral, the wheels are chocked then that should uh, stop the parking brake um, reactivating. And just to test the parking brake is off, you can see whether you can turn the wheel, which we can. Prize off the spring clip. So once the electronic parking brake has been uh, disabled, turned off, uh, you can stop it re-enabling by disconnecting the motor to the parking brake, which is, uh, this is the motor, this is the connector. So you have to make sure this little tab is uh, out, something like that. You push down on it and you can see at the end of it see that piece of plastic rise up that releases the clip and with a bit of prizing you can push that whole connector off and then you can turn off the engine and uh, if the electronic parking brake tries to re-engage of course it won't engage on this side now the other thing we need to do is to actually remove the electronic parking brake and it's held in place by a couple of little uh, bolts which I've already removed, here's one. And it's got a hex type uh, end to it, which is a five millimeter size. So one is in this position here. The other one, you'll feel by your hands, and it's uh, right down the back here, 
just two bolts. And then with a little bit of wiggling, you'll be able to remove the electronic parking brake unit. Like so, and you can see how it works. Basically, uh, motor, bit of a gearbox, a central spindle rotates and winds this shaft in or out to apply the uh, parking brake. Um, now what we need to do, I believe, is wind back the electronic parking brake. Uh, probably need to get a socket on, you actually can just about turn it by hand. That socket would certainly be easier. Uh, once we wind it back, we should then be able to push the piston of the caliper back into place, which we need to do because we need to get new brake pads in, which are thicker. I've got an E12 star socket, which is a loose fit onto that. And if you notice, turning anti-clockwise, where are we? Piston over there. Yeah, turning anti-clockwise pushes the piston out. So obviously clockwise for retracting the piston. So do that as far as it go. And then we'll be able to push the piston back. Okay, so that's clockwise as far as it will go. So I've already removed one of these bolts uh, to part of the sliding mechanism for the caliper um, in preparation for swinging it out of the way. And what you'll find you probably can do is you can get a screwdriver behind the brake pad, possibly in this space here, do it evenly, one underneath, before taking the old brake pads off. And you can use them to basically lever out this part of the sliding part of the caliper that then pushes the piston back into its slot and you then have you see lots of movement in the caliper you can then slide the caliper hopefully out of the way remove this wear sensor like so and be careful not to kink your brake hose too much you can see now We've got good access to the uh, brake pads. And actually, I've just realized that having just undone one of the uh, sliding caliper uh, bolts, uh, you then, having slid it out of the way, you can just push it off the other sliding bolt and you can just rest it out of the way somewhere. So it makes it a little bit easier. We can easily remove our pads, like so. So they haven't worn down to the metal, but they do need changing one and then the other. So you want to clean up the uh, part of the metal where the brake pad slides and ideally apply, apply a little bit of copper grease on these sliding parts of the metal uh, making sure you don't get it on the actual disc itself. And to look at the brake pad wear indicator, so again that's the old one, let's see if we can zoom in and uh, compare that with the new one and you can see it's definitely being triggered. So on the new one, there's a piece of metal that uh, has obviously pinged off or worn off the, uh, the old one. Uh, the notch on the top there has been worn off the old one. So it's a definite trigger of the uh, wear indicator. And uh, now we've got the caliper out of the way, we can also uh, remove some more of the cabling. Uh, a little bit difficult doing that one-handed, so it's quite a long piece of cable. We need to trace that back and plug it in wherever it goes. And right over there you can see where the cable plugs in. Uh, you, can, you can pull it out of the uh, little holes that keep it in place. Just get a screwdriver, wrench it out, and then you need to work out how to get that connector off. A little clip on the end, I think these squeeze in. I'm going to have to do it two-handed. Yeah, press that. You can see that. Press that and then pull two apart. The disc wasn't too badly worn, so I just gave it a light sand over the rusty parts to flatten it out a little bit more. Up to you what you do. Um, if you're going to change the disc, which um, a lot of people would do, of course, then there's this bolt that needs undoing. And the remains of the caliper would have to be removed, which is held on by bolt here. And one at the bottom, down there, probably quite high torque spec. So but then just pull straight off and put your new one on. Now it's just a matter of reassembling. Here's the new uh, wear sensor wired in. 
and let's just wipe away any dust out of these uh, little slots where the knee pads go. I guess we can just use the old pad to see how easily they, smoke, they slide or not, or not. That's okay. So here's our new pads. Uh, so I've gone for these Mintex ones, which are MDB3783 for this car. The sensor was uh, WIR5320. And we do a little bit of copper grease and a bit of Loctite 243 to go on the sliding, uh, the, well, the bolts for the sliding caliper section. So we'll apply a little bit of Loctite 243 to the threads on there before we assemble them. And also we'll put a little bit of money grease on the surface of these bolts because the uh, this section of the caliper slides over it, stops it rusting and also helps it to slide a little bit better. These particular pads come with these backing plates which need reassembling. And what I like to do is put some copper grease, just a little smear over the back of the pads assemble the backing and again a little bit on the the back of that uh, spacer plate as well and a little bit of copper grease around the edges of the metal and what that does is basically stops the brake squealing. And the pads with that spring attachment goes on the inside section so this side because that is where the wear sensor is going to go. Okay, so that's one of the pads just very lightly greased and make sure you, of course, don't get it anywhere near the friction surface. Okay, so now into reassembling. And now the piston fits over the new pads. If you do have problems with it not fitting, you might have to push the piston back for a little bit more effort. Um, so you could take out one of the pads and leave a screwdriver between the disc and the piston, push it back, or between the disc and the sliding part of the caliper. And that is some Loctite 243 blue stuff onto the uh, uh, caliper bolt, sliding bolt, and then we need to tighten that up. So as for uh, tightening those uh, guide pin bolts, caliper sliding pin bolts, uh, typically they're about 20 pound foot. Obviously the car is so new there's no uh, like uh, Haynes manual or anything. If anyone looks it up on the topic system, let me know. Uh, you can tell from when you undid it that it wasn't a huge torque and 20 I think is about right and it's got uh, a thread locker on it anyhow to stop them undoing. The next thing we'll do is uh, wind back the electronic parking brake but first of all we need to press the brake pedal to get the uh, hydraulics to push the piston back onto the new pads to get it in the right position which we've just done. So now with our what's it called E12 little socket uh, so a reminder, yeah, clockwise just to wind it back, so anti-clockwise just to wind it in. Actually only needs a little bit before you can feel pressure on it. So we'll stop there and that'll be about the right position. And then we need to wiggle our motor mechanism back into place. Making sure you don't get any muck in it while you're doing it. So it might need a bit of wiggling to line up that gear. There we go. And now firmly push back into place. And let's get those bolts uh, with a little bit of thread locking compound on them. And then pop these bolts back in. You might need to Rotate the motor a little bit, get the holes in line up like so. Uh, that's most of it reassembled in the same way as you took it apart. Uh, so for this that needs the electrical connector to the parking brake motor, needs a good firm push and that little clip on the end needs pushing back in again to lock it in place. And then the wear sensor needs relocating, this is the new one. So just push it in and it's held in place by a spring clip. And there we go. 
So that uh, is how you replace the brakes on your Discovery Sport on the rear. And the final bit of calibration of the electronic parking brake uh, is, I believe, to uh, start the car, press your foot on the uh, brake pedal and put the electronic parking brake on and off maybe a couple of times. That just makes the motor go in and out, go in and out to uh, reach its proper position. This bit of rough look on the disc uh, should polish off within uh, the first few miles of using the brakes uh, to make it look normal. So that's it all reassembled. Don't forget about the spring clip um, on there as well. That just pushes on. And, uh, and it's going to be exactly the same on the other side, a little bit simpler. So on the other side you don't have the uh, wear sensor. So if you decide to give it a go, good luck with yours. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, very little sort of hazard involved in doing it. And uh, certainly cheaper than taking it to a dealer. Uh, you use, uh, as I say, I quite like the Mintex ones. Okay, good luck and thanks for watching. Bye.